Welcome to this week's edition of Santa Ana's only educational news and public information program, Education First, here on Channel 31. I'm Jeff Gothard. In our news briefs this week, David Esch brings us an interview with Coach Mel Silva from Saddleback High. We tag along on a field trip to the zoo with Adams Elementary classes, check out the children's section at our Santa Ana Public Library, and review some of this week's Halloween festivities. Our first story is about a special teacher who is a cross-country, track, and soccer coach at Saddleback High School. Hold on to each other! Come on, Benny! Put your shoulders down! Mel Silva coaches cross-country, track, and soccer. He had the highest-ranking soccer team in the nation a couple years back, and the United Way named him most influential Hispanic in sports and entertainment. But Mel didn't even like sports growing up. They always needed a, a goalie, you know, somebody to just stand there. And I was that one person. That Mel I teaches there. social studies and English from the same high school where he graduated. He remembers a poignant memory. When I was here, there were some people that didn't believe in, in us, in me, because of they didn't look to the inside. They looked, they looked at me in the outside. And I, one of the reasons why I came into teaching because of that. I wanted to help change that. In one of my English classes, uh, they were handing out, um, talking about applications for college and SATs. And I asked for information. I went up because, you know, she handed out to certain kids in, in the classroom, and I didn't get one. And uh, information on uh, placement tests and, uh, for college. And I asked, and she says, well, what for? Are you really going to go to college? So that, it, it hurt. It hurt. Yeah. And it just, but you know, and I, I just, I could have, I could have taken, I could have made that an excuse. But I think it, uh, I took it the other way and it was more motivation for me. And I see some kids that they put those roadblocks in themselves. If somebody comes up with them and approaches them in that line, or they, they maybe with a put down or what have you, and they make it an excuse. And I believe that it should be the other way around. It should be, it should add, give you more incentive to do better uh, because they're wrong. Right. And you need, to, you need to prove that they're wrong. And that attitude made Mel the community spokesperson for the movie Goal, The Dream Begins. It's okay to have dreams, son, but people like us have to work for a living. There's always plan B. We win the lottery. He's grown up in poverty and hardship, and his only way out is his skill with the ball. Monez just wanted to see what it felt like to be in this field. You think you deserve it? I know I do. Well, that movie, it relates to kids in Santa Ana because many, there has been many kid, kids here in Santa Ana have gone far, and I know friends that are in that dream of that movie, Go, is basically the same story that he went through. Kids go through it every day. Cesar Zarate, like Mel, says he doesn't let others discourage him. You know, a lot of people saying racial stuff to me, you know, I have to be strong and, you know, overcome those, you know, the thoughts that other people have about me and like a lot of people here in my team. In order to be on the soccer team, Students also have to be on the cross country team. Mel says fitness is more important than technique. And with childhood obesity and diabetes on the rise, he hopes kids get outside. When I was growing up, uh, after school, we did our homework, we went outside. We couldn't wait to get outside and play. And we played from until the last drop of the sun was going in. And if mom came outside, it's time to go in, we were mad. We were upset because we had to go in because we meant that, that okay, you're going to go shower, you're going to go to bed, boom. Today, they have to get them out of the house. And with two parents working, kids are consuming more fast food and less home cooking. This cross-country team, the day before a competition, is gathering to carb up with a spaghetti dinner. 
I believe other coaches are there for the win, for just the sport. He's really there for the person um, to get better, to be a better person in the community, uh, to be a, a – he's very pro-education. He'll help you out, not just in, in soccer but in school too. He got us – well, for me personally, he got me like a – he got me an interview with a, with a coach from Concordia University. And they, I played a year in college. He always tells us we're student athletes, students comes f student comes before athlete, so he wants us to do good in school, get good grades, and then do sports, you know, maybe get a scholarship and get all our school paid for. I think what keeps me going, as a matter of fact, I know what it keeps me going is that you get a kid to come out, or a boy or girl, especially girls with really low self-esteem, and you see the potential in them, and you tell them, you know what, you can do this and this and this and that, you're going to be running so fast if we do this and this and this and that. And uh, they don't believe you. And, but they try. And they keep trying. And they keep going. And they keep going. And then all of a sudden, everything you told them is coming true. It's, it's they're, they're accomplishing it. And that smile, when they get off that course, when they get off that field, and they have that huge smile in their face holding the medal, and they're just, they don't, I mean, they jump it for joy. That's the payment made me believe in myself. In what way? Like, well, he tells me that I could run faster and he like pushes me. So then that makes me feel more confident about myself. And yeah, I try harder. The world's most popular sport is soccer. And although pros can be superstars, this teacher says to play on the world stage, you must make education first. From Santa Ana, I'm David Esch. The Santa Ana Public Library is a real asset to our community, and especially for parents of Santa Ana Unified students. We went there to speak to the librarian and take a tour. The Santa Ana Public Library first opened their doors in 1886 and has been providing services to the community ever since. The main branch has been located here in the downtown area at Ross and Civic Center since 1960 and is a classic example of an urban oasis where readers and researchers can immerse themselves in a world of books. Let's see what they have to offer for Santa Ana students and parents. We spoke to librarian Angie Wynn in the Youth Services section of the library. Okay, this is our children's um, library. As you can see, um, the special program is promoted um, every month and then this month we are um, promoting the library card campaign in order to um, get the students into the library, to use the library, and to make it a habit to come into the library um, on the daily, uh, you know, to help them with um, school, to help them with the recreation of reading, and just anything that they, they need for school uh, and homework. Every month we have a special program where we invite uh, professional performers to come in and for November uh, celebrating the uh, Native American uh, month we have a, a Native American performer who come in and do you know, Indian dance and it's really fun yeah uh, this is the monthly um, activity calendar and it shows everything that we have going on for the month um, including story time activities uh, special programs uh, workshops, students' workshops, or parents' workshops, and everything that we have listed on here is available on the uh, library website as well, so patrons and parents can download any information they need. Parents can bring their children into the castle reading room for story time and crafts. As you can see, I think the parents come as much for themselves as they do for the children, whether they know it or not, because it just opens up more and more opportunity and uh, things to learn, you name it. it. It's all related, and I love to see them get excited about the books 
or making a craft to go along with the books to remind them of the story. And uh, maybe they can check the same book out that they've read in here and take it home and read it. And they just, the ones that come back, I love to see them come back year after year. And they do well in school. They, it just makes us feel good all over <laughs> to see them. <laughs> the library also offers story time for older students in grades four through seven who can also benefit from listening to books that fit their age group. This program is a, a new program that we were trying to engage the older students to come in and, you know, help them with the reading. They come in, we provide them with uh, comfortable chairs, and the librarians will read to them, and we mainly focus on character building um, stories. Students can use the computers at the library to do research for schoolwork, and the youngest computer users are accommodated with a simple system loaded with fun preschool well, one reading of the, readiness software. Um, stories are one of the programs that's available on here. Stella and Luna is a good one. It's a very, um, it's a famous ch uh, picture book. Um, there's some math program here and they can learn how to paint. So they can learn how to, you know, do things like that. Then change the color to There is even a DVD and CD section that boasts a large collection of Spanish language movies and music that are appropriate for kids, all available for free to library card members. The students can keep them for two weeks. So this is in addition to the um, Spanish language books. Uh, this is another um, service that we provide to the uh, Spanish speaking community. Um, we've been coming to the Santa Ana Library story time since my oldest son, who's nine now, uh, was three years old. And I have brought, I have a seven-year-old, and now I have a four-year-old. And we've come almost every Wednesday, every week, and Bobby comes and reads stories, about three stories a week. And um, it's helped us because we've really gotten to collect a lot of good literature. There's so many books. This is a great collection. I've been to other libraries and I've been to bookstore story times, but you can't always buy the books every week. So it's great to come here and um, the kids love to pick out books and we read things that we wouldn't read otherwise. So my kids love to read and it's really developed a love of reading. And um, they just, they love coming here. They have fun, they do a craft, and then they get to pick out whatever books they want. So now that my kids are in school, it helps if they're doing projects or um, if we want to focus on a certain area of learning, um, maybe phonics or um, sometimes math. They have a really good collection, poetry. So it's just a really great resource and I think it's wonderful and encourage all parents to do it. The more you read, the better you read. And better readers make better students. Your public library is a great place to get started. For more information about programs and services offered at the Santa Ana Public Library, it's because I like getting books. How old are you, Max? Four. You're four years old? Yeah. Oh, have you been coming to story time a lot? Mm -hmm. I've worked with the library for many years, and the reason I've stayed is I've enjoyed working with the children. I uh, like to see them. Um, they've come since their uh, kindergarten. We see them uh, they go through jun uh, elementary, junior high, high school, and uh, eventually they go on to college, and I love seeing how much that we help them. Uh, get through school. You can call the Youth Services Department directly at 647-5258. Literacy research has recommended children visit the library once a week, so the school library at Adams Elementary has been open to the students and their parents on Saturdays between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. because it's the closest library to that area around the school. In other library news, Diamond Elementary's after-school program, Project Nest, puts together a haunted house fundraiser each year in their school library to keep kids off the streets 
and Valley High students volunteer to help with the production. Well, I, I wasn't expecting anything at first to pop up when I was stepping inside the haunted house. First thing I see is someone pop out out of nowhere. It kind of really scared me. It was um, sort of scary, but I wasn't expecting someone to scare me like at the beginning. We're here with the crew that's running the Diamond Elementary haunted house. And we want to ask a few questions. How's it going this year? Uh, this year we're uh, looking to scare a lot of kids and uh, hopefully at the same time keep them off the street. You know, uh, the haunted house is our fourth annual haunted house that we've been doing at Diamond. And what we like to do is provide a safe environment for the kids to enjoy Halloween out here in Santa Ana. And we've been very lucky that uh, we get a good turnout and uh, I think people are very surprised uh, how much fun they can have at an elementary school haunted house. Is it open to the whole community or just the school? Well actually we do open it up to the local elementary schools and uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, Valley High School by us. We get tremendous amounts of uh, extra help from our high school students from Valley High School and uh, of course the staff at uh, Project Nest after school program provide the uh, core of our Honda house every year. <laughs> okay. Um, and now, what do you use, the funds that you gather from this, you use them for uh, contributing, to, wh wh tell me about it. How does it well, unfortunately, the haunted house costs a lot of money. Uh, we have to, uh, every year, uh, redo by wood, and we actually have, uh, we're very fortunate to have families that are contractors that come and help set up the haunted house, and uh, they do it for free, but we do have to purchase some materials. And so the funds that we do earn from the haunted house actually allow us to uh, break even and we aren't here to make a profit. We're actually here for the kids to have fun. And uh, Halloween is my favorite time of the year. And as a coordinator for Project Nest, I can't think of more fun than to share it with the kids during this time of the year. Great. OK, we better go inside and check it out. Can we have some ghouls guiding us through? What is your, what is your uh, kind of costume? What are you? I'm a zombie. OK. How about you? What are you? I'm a zombie in the tail. Do you go to Valley? Yeah. What's your name? Cynthia. That's what that are coming back. That's a lot of them are in there, and that's the biggest thing that I want to offer. Did you go to, ele to elementary school at this school, sir? No. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you What do you do when you're not being a uh, zombie maniac? Um, go to school. <laughs> I think it's um, a great opportunity for them to just have fun at school. <coughs> Not come to the school, but I'm a part of the staff, and I enjoy doing this every year. And this is the best time of the year to be doing this right now. And uh, this is actually my favorite time too. Okay. All right, let's go inside and see what we can find. Let's go ahead and get them set up. You guys go get back ahead, in you position. Guys set up where you are. I don't know if we can see you. That's the only bad yeah. thing. Halloween brought out the witches, mummies, and TV characters that lurk in the hearts of our district employees at an annual lunchtime costume parade, all in the spirit of good-natured fun. Here we are, down at the district training center for the annual Halloween costume contest and parade. Let's see what we've got here at the district in terms of creativity for costume making.
actually practiced for three week, for two, three days. Yeah. We practiced and uh, the entrance and the costumes. Uh, Cindy decorated. She made this dress for me actually. And this morning, as soon as we got here, we started putting our makeup and we did it. And oh my God, we we're nervous, but we did it. Great. <laughs> we all decided we've got to do something. So it was actually her brainchild. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have a lot of interest in uh, Egyptian Egyptian things already? Oh, I like antique jewelry and that sort of thing. So I thought this would be good because we could all dress up and wear jewels. Okay. Good job. I'm glad. Thank you. Well, you know, basically, uh, last night and this morning, last night and this morning, <laughs> we were in the middle of testing and uh, receiving test materials, and this just came to play. We said, let's do last minute. Let's go to the Goodwill. Let's get wigs, and let's do it. That's it. Five minutes in the morning. That's that it. Was it. As part of a partnership with the Futures Channel, we now provide viewers with interesting videos that connect math, arts, science and technology concepts with real world careers. We'll be showing many programs from the Futures Channel right after this edition of Education First, so stay tuned. Also on Channel 31, all this week at 10.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 7.30 p.m., except for Tuesday evening during the board meeting, we'll be showing Help Me Grow, produced by KOCE-TV with funding from the Orange County Children and Families Commission. This program will be presented in English and Spanish, and it's about how parents can learn more about healthy ways to help their children learn and grow. This week's episode is called Big Events in Little Lives, and it's about how we can help children get through tough times such as a divorce or a death in the family. We'd like to hear from you. So if you have good news about your Santa Ana school, or you just want to let us know how we're doing, please call us at 480-5374, or email us at our new shorter email address, channel31 at sausd.us. That's our news for today. Thank you for watching, and if you see something you like on our show, please tell a friend. I'm Jeff Gothard for Education First, Santa Ana's only educational news and public information program here on Channel 31.